Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. I want to remind you that you got this. Wherever you are, you got this. Recently, I've been seeing so many comments of people feeling down, people feeling stuck, people feeling kind of left behind. Many of you are comparing yourself with others or not liking how your life is going. Maybe you've lost a job, maybe you've lost an income, maybe something very challenging happened to you. And those are the phases in our lives where it's not enough to look up for something and kind of stay positive because it will not change the situation. It's about accepting it and, and seeing are you really doing everything that you can to change it? And it also doesn't mean to keep working hard on finding the solutions. But it means, are you keeping promises to yourself? Are you really keeping promises to yourself? Like, it doesn't matter what has fallen apart, you're still you still have life and and life is not just something to take for granted it's also listening to life like make sure you're not doing things you will regret later for example what anna frank said that people receive more flowers than living ones because regret is stronger than gratitude do you feel that? Remember these words, because what does it mean? Dead people receive more flowers than living ones because regret is stronger than gratitude. It's because people don't do things until it's too late and then they regret it. That's why they bring flowers. Sure, obviously they bring them also because of love, but how often you wanted to do something and you didn't and then you've regretted it if you would do it you would feel grateful that's why dead people receive more flowers than living ones because there are so many words we would love to say to someone there are so many things we would love to do for someone there's so many deep conversations we would love to have with that special person. If there is a challenge, don't say those are toxic people, try to resolve it. If you can't resolve it, move away. But don't be a victim of whatever is going on. You see, there's always something you can do. Or you can do... You can do... You feel you can do anything and live in constant blame and regret. It's, it's all a choice. And then Atticus said, the poet, he said, we drink the poison of our minds pour for us and wonder why we feel so sick. We drink the poison of our minds pour for us and wonder why we feel so sick. So, how often you trust your own story you're telling to yourself about what's happening? Well, your life may be falling apart, but what? Will you, will you follow these sensations of feeling like a loser, feeling like nobody, feeling like your life is a one great misery? Will you be identified with what you feel? Because it's, it's a chemistry produced by the story of your thoughts. It's just the chemistry, it's a simple science. Each thought produces a chemistry, the science of epigenetics, and chemistry is being experienced through emotions. So when we feel overwhelmed emotionally, it's because there's so much of different, even toxic chemistry present in the body. It's not just emotional, it's also because of the food that you consume, because of the poison of your mind, it's because of 
not taking care of yourself, not nurturing yourself. And there's so much you can do. You can say, yeah, well, my life is falling apart and I can only be happy when my life is going well. It's like saying I'm, I'm grateful to life when my life is going well and, and I hate life when my life is not going well. Well, it's not really a grateful approach. It's more like a selfish approach. And I think it's time for you to to rise up beyond this state and recognize that maybe everything is a miracle. And you don't see it like that because you're being selfish. You're, you're being selfish, like you know better than God or you know better than what's good for you, than, than the universe. You know better than the mystical force that is urging you into growth. It's really a play of your mind, the poison of your mind. I think everybody was through something that was impossible to be explained from a positive perspective, like why did this thing needed to happen to me? Why I needed to go through this? Why I needed to lose that person? Why I needed to be robbed or scammed? Or why I needed to lose this money? Or why I needed to get sick? Or why all those things needed to happen? Why I've lost this? Many people may feel like that. And everyone has been through something like that. But then only a few people see it as an... As a moment for reflection and sometimes for biting your tongue and just keep moving forward, keep rebuilding your life, it's not over. One poetic quote uh, says that the stars would be so proud to know their atoms created somebody like you. And usually we appreciate words like that when we feel good about ourselves, when we feel that our life is going well, when we feel that so many good things happen and it's time for me to be grateful. But sometimes in our darkest days it's important to remind ourselves that at the end of the day, it's really not what is happening around me, but what's my essence? Is my essence still pure? Is there still a space for peace? Can I still find something to appreciate? Am I staying true to my values? What are my values? What are you valuing in your life? And just think a bit about it for a moment. You see, a cell needs an order so it can grow into something. Some cells decided to grow into hands, some cells decided to grow into legs, some cells decided to grow into brain. Because there is a higher order for everything. And this higher order is it's a byproduct of evolution. That's why you don't need to tell your body into what it needs to grow, it just grows. But then your mind comes into play and starts blocking this natural order because you think you know the best. You think you know what's best for you. And you only know until you don't know. So you recognize when good things are happening, there's a reason to be happy. But when bad things are happening, there's nothing to appreciate. So what if life is actually challenging you? Can you have more faith? Can you increase faith when nothing is working in your favor? when you think that nothing is working in your favor? And can you 
start trusting that maybe this higher order that created life possible, that makes sure that your nervous system is functioning, that your complexity of breathing and heart beating and constant cell rejuvenation and regrowth is happening all the time without you thinking about it. Can you start trusting that maybe this higher order is also breaking your old life? So through the scars and wounds, a new one can emerge, a better one, brighter one. So can you just keep going and not being so attached to your own expectations for how it should turn out to be? Because just maybe you don't know what's best for you. If you just consider to think that maybe you just don't know what's best for you, maybe you needed to lose a job because somewhere in the future a better one will find you. Or maybe because poverty is the best way to activate your inner genius to find out that you can be your own source of abundance. Maybe you have an idea that just needs an incredibly strong push of anger and frustration that will turn this idea into something actual. That's why the struggle is often the most powerful motivation for us to change something, because we only crave something we don't have. You only crave having more money because you don't have it. Once you have it, you don't appreciate it anymore that much. That's why you waste it so unintelligently often. You only crave more health when you don't have it. That's why going through breakups and going through dark phases is so important because we just didn't learn to appreciate what we have. So sometimes we need to be activated. And there's a saying that says, no risk, no story. So we need to take risks in order to write a new story, to write a new chapter and to begin something we always wanted. And if we would not begin, most probably we would regret it on our last day. We would say, well, I wish I would do that. I want to come back because I want to do that. That's why we go back into reincarnation. Because there's too many things we regret not doing. So Mark Anthony once said, don't deny your fire, my dear. Just be who you are who you are and burn. But it's so hard for many people to realize what it means because you've been so surprised and so many people are trying to shut off this fire that you've started to believe that burning your own fire is not healthy. Burning in your own unique way is not good. It's not valued, it's not appreciated. So we've started to believe that what is good is only when people are valuing you. The good things are only the ones that people appreciate about you. The good things are only the ones that when people come to you, they say, oh, you've done something great. So you've started to believe that you only want to do what people will appreciate about you. So, you need to remind yourself that you've been brainwashed and you need to ask yourself what truly puts that fire into, into growth. Like, what is the real wood for your inner fire? And recognize, could you do more of it? Thomas Wilder said, it's hard to turn the page when you know someone won't be in the next chapter, but the story must go on. So at some point you really need to decide, well, I will leave these people behind. 
not because of your ego, not because you feel more superior or whatever, but just because they are dimming your light and and for some time you need to really focus on yourself. Even not to improve yourself or whatever, but just to notice once again what you want to do, in what kind of direction you want to grow and where this natural order of life is really taking you. So it's the solo journey we've been talking in previous videos. And sometimes it's very scary to turn on the, the new page because you know that certain people will just not be there. It's a whole another story where you just need to accept what is happening and see it as a part of the journey. And kind of believing that through your creative imagination, you will come up with a solution. Not when you want, but when the solution will find you. And if you understand that life works through seasons, there is season for understanding, there is season for sorrow, there is season for blooming, there is season for reaping. And all these seasons are important. And you may be like, why the season of sorrow is is important. I would rather thrive and bloom and flourish. But the season of sorrow is so important because that's when you learn to filter your life. Like what are the things you would really like to do and you were not doing them because of all kinds of other responsibilities and pleasing others and putting yourself on the side for others because of guilt or whatever you felt. And it led to sorrow. It led to struggle. You've started struggling because you've been doing too much for others and too little for what you've been born to do, what you're meant doing. So you need this struggle, you need this sorrow, you need to move through poverty. As the quote goes, anyone who has ever struggled with poverty knows how extremely expensive it is to be poor. And it doesn't mean financially. It means emotionally. How much it drains you to be poor. Because you know you deserve so much more. But at the same time, you know you have to build it. And when you're looking about you know, looking into the possibility of building something out of your life, you see a lot of work, energy, effort and time. So you lose the faith into making it happen. That's why it's so expensive to be poor, because you're constantly thinking about a possibility, but you never do anything about it because it seems so hard. And because you've been so brainwashed to think that you're not capable of doing anything, that you're not smart, that you are whatever you've heard about yourself, it's even more expensive to stay there. So the solution really is to decide and to keep promises to yourself. And to raise your energy, it's just helpful if you take care of your body, if you walk more start working out, start moving your body and stop making small things big things. Maybe what happened to you as you think it's the biggest problem, maybe it's just a small thing compared to what you can build out of it. And if you would really invest at least one hour in a day for studying, for learning, you may get so many new perspectives that what happened was really just something small compared to really where it is taking you. So consider to start a new life with new routines. Start waking up with the sunrise. Go for a walk. Breathe. Feed your body with some fresh oxygen each morning. 
Study something that can help you to grow. Reflect on how your life is going. And use all the challenges to become stronger. Like, yeah, you've done maybe mistakes, but you haven't done them because you're stupid. You've done them because you're lacking wisdom. You're lacking the right knowledge. And who can give you that but life? And that's how life gives you knowledge. But then you ignore it because, oh, I'm not blessed. Oh, my life is falling apart. Yeah, sure. So the new, li the new one can grow because one day you will realize what it taught you what this experience taught you. So rather than trying to deny it and trying to ignore it and be a victim and see it as a problem, turn on the new page and start over. No risk, no story, my friend. And remember that the stars would be so proud to know their atoms created somebody like you. So make the universe proud because you've learned to use everything it gave you for greatness. And it is never easy. And it doesn't need to be easy. It just needs to be done. And once you will start working on it, every time you work on it, you will be rewarded with joy. If not with joy, with clarity. If not with clarity, at least something new will come into your life. And will remind you of the progress you're making. So my friend, I hope you found great value in today's video. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings and power. Stay in tune with yourself. Stay connected with your journey and keep the faith in yourself. It's not happening for nothing. It's happening for yourself. And you need to be really aware of that. Believe in yourself. My friends, till next time, one love. Hey, my friends, I hope you've enjoyed in today's video. I want to remind you that we've just opened a fresh new store called attractpassion.com where you can find all of my work original paintings you can find prints of all of my art in different sizes so go there and check it out attractpassion.com if you will use the code passion15 passion15 you will get 15 off onto your first order so go there and check it out and to anyone who would love to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I'm offering one-on-one -on -one coaching. We have some free spots once again. You can go and check out the link in the description of this video where you can find everything there. So go and check it out. If you would like to do something with the inspiration that you feel right now, it will help you so much to transform your life. I want you to do something with it. If you feel inspired, you have to do something with it. So my friends, the next time, one love.